I've showed this hat recently um, along with this one right here and we've had a lot of interest in how I made these hats. Now basically this is a type of a spike stitch if you're familiar with that only this one does not cre create such a thick fabric. Karen Hales helped me notice that it is a combination stitch of a spike and mesh. So if you want to learn how to make a hat like this, stay tuned. Hey everybody, it's me Margaret, and usually when I do a tutorial, I try to provide you with a downloadable format of this pattern, something written for you to refer to later, especially if you don't need a video tutorial, right? Um, as you watch this video, though, you're going to actually see some behind-the-scenes work on how I uh, sort of do the hat and make my notes so that I know how to explain it to you in text form. So forgive what you see in the written form. By the time this gets edited and uploaded, you're going to have a nice pretty one like the one you see behind me right here to download for your reference. This is a super hat to use with your scraps. If you have just a little bit of a color left, you can fit it in right here pretty easily. This is not a typical spike stitch. It does go down into the row below, but it does not go over a whole lot of, of stitching, making it extra bulky. It is a firm feel right here, but it still stretches and it is uh, you know, a little bit lighter than your typical stretch stitch. And that's because you put a chain in between. You'll see when we get to it. Now this video assumes you know the basics, like your favorite method for starting a hat or project in the round. Um, half double crochet, single crochet, slip stitch, that sort of thing. But I would not consider this to be a beginner pattern. And the reason why is because you really need to be comfortable reading your work, reading your stitches, uh, which is the term for knowing exactly what you're you're looking at when you look down there so that uh, placement of stitches won't be confusing. Now if you're an old hat at crochet, that was funny right? <laughs> if you know what you're doing, you can go ahead and start doing a half double crochet basic hat in the round, continuous rounds no joining. Go about two-thirds of the way down and then you can pop to this point in the video where I demonstrate how to do this spiked mess mesh stitch. I have the worst time saying that. However, if you need a little help doing a basic half double crochet in continuous round stopping two-thirds of the way down, or maybe you need help sizing the hat to get it to fit the way you want it to, then stay tuned because we'll take it from the beginning and move on. I would suggest that you click the link to download the pattern so that you can kind of follow along as we work together to create this hat. I hope you like it. Now I'm holding here the beginning versions of a pattern, a written pattern, that will be available on my blog for download. But uh, what I do is normally do the video tutorial and then I can make any changes I need to here. First of all, let's look at the materials. I'm using an eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter hook. But the reason why is because that's my favorite one that I use with worsted weight yarn and that's what I suggest for this hat. But we've got some easy sizing techniques, so it does. if you don't like to use this, if you want to use a smaller or larger hook, feel free to do that. Whatever is comfortable for you with worsted weight yarn, and we'll talk about how to size it exactly by making adjustments later. You're also going to need oh, three to four colors of worsted weight yarn. This again could vary as well. Um, a tapestry needle for sewing in your ends, and also a stitch marker because I prefer to do this hat in continuous rounds, which means that I'm not going to have a seam in the back, which uh, makes me happy. I don't like seams if I can avoid them. But in order to size this correctly, you're going to need a hat sizing chart of some kind. Now this one is bound on my blog. I can give you a link to, do, to download just this, keep it handy. This is all for crochet except for my handwritten notes that I, I just added in there for me when I use scrap hats, that's for knitting. So ignore this for the purpose right here. Now let's say that we want to make a hat for ourselves, a woman's size, okay? Um, this is my size because I, my head is 22 inches around. Head size, 22 inches. So you'll notice that usually the hat size will always be a little bit tighter for, so it'll, it'll be a snug fit. And the hat height, which is from crown to ear, will be 
eight and a half inches. Now, flat circle diameter, that's when to stop your increases. You keep creating a flat circle wider and wider and wider until it reaches a diameter of six and a half inches, 6.5, or any of these, depending upon what size that you want to make. Now, as far as the yarn goes, I'm gonna use this Vantage Choice. I'm thinking kind of Christmassy since this is November when I'm filming this. So I chose these three, which are Mustard, Cranberry, and Kelly Green. So let's get started. It says with main color, magic loop or method of your choice, chain two and do eight half double crochet in the circle. So when you finish, you're gonna have eight stitches in a circle and then you're gonna place a marker in the first half double crochet of this round. So here's how I like to start hats. I lay my yarn on top and then I just kind of twist these two. And then I begin my chain, one, two, and then I'll do eight half double crochet in that first chain right there. Yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three, and that's your first half double crochet. So we got, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, now I'll go through until I have eight. Meet you back. Just making sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the instructions say to mark that first stitch, but clearly you can just count backwards and you know that that was it. <laughs> so that's technically correct, but I'm not going to mark it just yet. Now round two tells us two half double crochet at each stitch for a total of 16. Now, I always put that, that marker in as soon as I can, as soon as I complete that, that first stitch. Let me show you what I do. So I've picked up my work. I know that that's where I'm going to be crocheting in. I have to do two, right? So I haven't joined anything. I just continue on around. So I yarn over to do this first half double crochet. There's one, and I don't like to put my work down until I complete that second one. Two, all right? So this is the second one, this is the first one. I'll mark it right away. Now I'll continue around and do two in every stitch as the instructions told us. And I'll meet you back around when we have 16. 16, boom. All right, let's count to make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And it's marking the 16th, so we did it correctly. So what's next? We're on round three doing our increases, and it says two half double crochet in the first stitch, one in the next for 24 stitches. Replace the marker. All right, so we go two, then one, two, then one, two, then one, all the way around for 24. Now, I suppose I could do my work with the stitch marker in there, but I don't like to, so I'm going to take it out. So, two, then one. One, two, replace the marker in that very first stitch right there. And then I do a single one by itself, a half double crochet by itself there. Now, partners in this one, one, two, and one alone. Now I'm going to continue on in this pattern. Partners together. This is called an increase when you do two in one stitch. And then one stitch alone. Continue around until I get the, the required amount. So I just counted and I do have 24 stitches just as round three told us. So let's look at round four. We're going to do two half double crochet in the first stitch and then one half double crochet in the next two stitches for a total of 32. So it'll go like this. Two in this stitch, one, one. Two in this stitch, one, one. So I'm beginning. So I do my partners in this first stitch. One partner, two partners, 
put the stitch marker back in the first partner and then I have to do two by themselves okay so we have two stitches right here and each one will contain only one half double crochet one there and one there so what we've done is two one one now let's do it again one partner and in the same stitch we do another one so we've got two standing together in there and then one, one, each one of those by themselves. So we did two, one, one, two, one, one. I'll continue around until I have 32. So I just completed that round and look what this nice flat circle that we've got like this. And I counted exactly 32 back to the first stitch so we're good to go to the next row okay so we are at round five now where we're going to do two half double crochet at the first stitch and then we're going to do one in each of the next three stitches so it'll go two one two three two one two three for a total of 40 remembering about our marker every time so I just completed round five with that same pattern 40 stitches is the total and you can see it's making a nice flat circle just as it's supposed to so if we were to measure this flat circle diameter we see that it's four inches so would that even fit anything if we look at our chart here the zero to six month is recommended to have a flat circle diameter of four inches so if I stop the increases right here I could have a little bitty baby hat but I want to make a bigger hat, so I'm going to keep going. So round six, we got the same type of pattern. We do two in the first stitch, and then we do one half double crochet in the next four stitches, in each of the next four stitches, for a total of 48, remembering about the marker. So we're just continuing on in the same type of patterning. So I just finished round six. I have a total of 48 inches, and just out of curiosity, let's measure the flat circle diameter and see. Okay, I've got it approximately five inches. I want you to measure yours too and see if our gauge is the same. It's really not important because as long as we know that the flat circle diameter determines the size, we can just continue to increase or not do as many rows depending upon our own gauge. You understand? Now remember, I'm shooting down here for this hat, so my flat circle diameter needs to be six and a half inches wide. So I'm going to continue to do these types of increases, just like this. Two in the first stitch, and then each row will have one extra number by itself. So I'll continue on with round seven, which is two half double crochet in the first stitch, and one half double crochet in the next five stitches for a total of 56 and replace that marker now I had to increase up to six uh, half double crochets by themselves and I got the flat circle diameter that I wanted which was six and a half inches so I made a note of this on the pattern I went up to round eight where the pattern increased to six stitches by themselves and I made a note of that here so we have two hats here that I actually did differently but the stitch is the same so you can make your decision about how far you want to go down I think for the hat that I'm making right now I'm gonna have it look something like this one instead of this one where I would separated it with a black row I started a little bit higher up here and I think I want it to look like this one today, the one that I'm working on. So now that we have completed our increase rows, because we have a flat circle diameter the size that we want, we're going to do the non-increase rows, or the straight half double crochet. So for rows 9 through 14, I think that ought to be about right, I'm going to do nothing but half double crochet in each stitch around. Half double crochet in each stitch around. So that's what? Six six more rows and then I'll meet you back to begin the spiked mesh stitch 
Okay, I'm back. I did my rows 9 through 14, which is approximately two-thirds of the hat. So that's, that's what you want to think about when you're choosing where you want your band. Of course, that's not a hard and fast rule because this looks like maybe one-fourth of the hat, <laughs> maybe a third of the hat on this one. But um, in case you want to replicate this, it's about two-thirds. Here's a sneak peek of how I write out this pattern. I have to work through it on my own and then I write down what I did and the best way to explain it to you. <laughs> so sorry for this messy. I will have the nice printed neat design pattern complete before I put this video up. Here we are beginning the colorful patterning right here. So I'm, I started it over calling it round one of this work right here. We're going to do one more half double crochet in our color, but we're going to finish it with a new color of yarn. Let's do just that much. So here is where we left off, and it tells us to do one more half double crochet, but finish with a new color of yarn. So let's remove that marker. We actually don't need it for this color part. We're going to do one more half double crochet, and we're going to finish it with a new color of yarn by pulling it through like that. Okay, so now we have our new color added back to the pattern. So we're going to half double crochet, chain one, and skip a stitch, repeating it all the way around until we have one stitch left. And that's what these little asterisks mean, is everything in between there means to be repeated. So half double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch all the way around until we have one stitch left. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I am going to add a little tip in here that we do not crochet over the tails because I found that sometimes the tails will show through when I was creating this stitch. So I just hold it out of the way, like come over here. And I also need to make a little note not to cut our original yarn. Let me do that now. I'm holding everything I don't want to work with out of the way. See, right there. So my instructions were to half double crochet in the next stitch, right there, and chain one, and skip a stitch. So that would be this one we're skipping. All right, I'm going to put my hand on it, my fingers. So we're going to begin our half double crochet and put it in this stitch. And chain one and skip another stitch and repeat this process all the way around. Just make sure you can see where this stitch was your last so you skip this one and you go into this one. This is the mesh part of the spiked mess, mesh <laughs> stitch. So I've done this half double crochet and a chain one. I'm going to skip this stitch and I need to finish that last half double crochet here. So I start it, but I finish it with a new color. This mustard pulling through like that. Okay, you might want to pull on this yarn to make sure the stitch is the same size as these over here. Okay. So that was the end of that first round of color. So you might be looking at this and say, but Margaret, look, you haven't actually joined anything. You haven't reached the end. Well, remember, we're doing this continuously in the round. We will have no seam. And in order to continue this seamless effect, we have to have the colors join in one at a time where they're supposed to in pattern. Okay, so that's why this looks like this. I'm going to have a little note here to remind you of that. So it looks like we're beginning our new color early, but we're really not. It's, it's all part of the plan. All right, so we have round two. We're going to chain one, skip a stitch, and half double crochet into the stitch below, also known as the spike. It's the same thing we did up here. We're just beginning with the chain one instead of beginning with the half double crochet. That way the colors will be alternated. So we chain one, we skip a stitch, we half double crochet into the stitch below. 
So here's my working yarn and I'm holding everything else out of the way and I begin with a chain one and then we're going to skip a stitch which would be this one right here and half double crochet into the stitch below this one which is right there. Alright let's look at this again. We've done our chain. This is where the stitch is taken care of right here. So we have a stitch here to skip. Here's the next stitch and we're going in below it right there. So this is what it looks like. We yarn over with beginning the half double crochet. We enter the stitch below on the row below and pull it up. You don't want to be too tight here because you want it to look spiky. Okay, so give it its height and then complete the half double crochet. Okay, so see how we join down in there? Alright, now let's repeat that. We chain one. We're going to, see we're in this stitch right there. We're going to skip this one and we're going to half double crochet down here. It's really easy once you get past that part because you can see the space. So just half double crochet into the stitch below the space. Gotta get my yarn coming from the right direction. Put it over there. Chain one and half double crochet into that one that's had below the space. We actually did all the skipping in the last row, so we know that it's right there. Now we really are skipping. You see this is where we were. We're skipping this stitch and we're crocheting into the next one in the row below. But it's just a little cheater tip to know that the one you need is the one below the space. And see how it's looking all spiky meshy already? Okay, we do have a space right here and we're going to fill that in with the next row. Now just like we did on the last row, what we'll be doing is completing that half double crochet with the next color. Now I'm going to use just this green and stick with three total colors, but it looks equally as well with, with more than, gosh, you could do a, every color of the rainbow if you wanted to. It's really a neat stitch. So what I have to do now is get everything out of the way and find my main green. Okay. Put the yellow over there. Looks like a big mess. Alright, where do we leave off? We're about to finish this last stitch with the next color, which in this case happens to be green. Ta-da! Okay. And guess what you're going to do? We're going to chain one. And we're going to continue this whole process the same exact way. We're going to yarn over and do our half double crochet in that stitch below the space. Chain one. And do the same thing right there. Okay. I, what I do is I get a, a landmark. And so this spike will be my landmark. And I'm going to choose this side right here, the one closest to the spike for my half double crochet spike. See it right there? Boom. Finish the half double crochet chain one. And stay, stay in the pattern. Half double crochet, chain one, skip down into here, la 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 la, all the way around. All right, so I'm back as I do for the previous rows. I have one left to complete, and I'm going to do the half double crochet and completely finish it off with the next color, which in my case is this maroony color, or as Lion Brand calls it, cranberry. Now here's the tricky part. We have to make sure we're getting the working yarn. There it is. Okay. 
and we bring it through to finish off that last half double crochet. And remember to make your spike stitch the same size as everything else. You might need to tug on that green back there. And then you complete, I mean, you, you continue on with that same pattern we've been using, which is the chain one, half double crochet into the row below. Chain one, all the way around. Now here's a question for you. How far can you continue this mesh pattern, this spike mesh pattern, and still have your hat fit? Well, that's where your chart comes in handy. Okay, we know I was working on this one, right? And so we have to look and say, how high? What's the hat height from crown to ear that I'm striving for? And that would be eight and a half inches. So get your handy dandy tape measure and check your progress. Okay, there's the top. Make it touch all parts of the hat as you travel down. And look, I'm only at six inches. So, at eight and a half, I have this much more to go. So I could continue my mesh, mesh pattern down to, I don't know, say here, and then finish off with green. If I wanted to, I technically could do it as long as all the way down to the bottom. It doesn't make any difference. You're the designer here. Now that you know how to do the stitch, you can make your decision about how wide that patterning needs to be. So continue on with the same chain one, half double crochet into the row below, methodology until you reach your desired amount of color and I'll show you how I finish off that last bit. So you continue on in pattern measuring occasionally until you reach a length you're happy with. You can finish your hat off any way you choose, but here's an option that I like to use. It gets rid of those holes caused by the chain one mesh. So I'm going to finish this row as I did with the other ones. There, there's a chain one right there. So I do a half double crochet in that row below, and then I'm going to finish it with my green. So I flip it over here, find my green working yarn, which is right here, and finish that half double crochet. Tighten up those legs so it's the right height. Now I'm still going to do a spike stitch down into the stitch below. And what that does is it fills in that hole, the mesh right there. But instead of chaining one, I'm going to do a single crochet right there. Then I'll do my half double crochet spike, and then I'm going to do a single crochet right there. So you see what I'm doing is actually just stopping the mesh pattern. Single crochet right here. So that it just kind of fills it in. So I'll continue on around with this modified version of the same thing we were doing. Single crochet in the top instead of a chain. And I'll meet you back around to finish off. So I'm back around and I've got one more mesh stitch to fill in. Can you see that hole right there? So what I'm going to do to end this thing is a half double crochet to close up that mesh. And then a single crochet here followed by a slip stitch. That slip stitch sort of pulls things down a little bit so that we don't have a big stair step. Let me show you. So I will go ahead and cut all this working yarn. Pull this through. And then in order to make this lie down, I'll do this. I want this to, I want this stitch to lie down like that, right? So, I'll go in right here. It's the very next stitch you would have normally crocheted into. And pull it tight. And now it's more or less pretty darn even. 
and sew the ends in. And then hide them the best you can. I like to split my yarn because it gives it a little bit more friction. It makes everything hold in place a little more securely. At least that's how it works in my mind. Now I'll sew all these other ends in as well and we'll be finished and see the finished product. So you can see the back here and there is no seam up the hat. The only indication of where rows have changed is right there. This looks all nice and neat all the way around the hat.